its energy surrounds us and binds us. Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to this week's episode of Carbonite Combos. Uh, this week, something, something kind of new, uh, we have our very first special guest, um, uh, a, a friend of Nick, former uh, high school classmate of Nick, um, and then I'll pass it over to you if you want to introduce him. Yeah, definitely. So like Alex said, uh, first special guest we got on today, um, you know, today's episode is about religion and Star Wars. I know we talked about it a little in last week's episode um, when we finally found out about Yoda. Um, but yeah, this week we're go we're diving into kind of the spirituality aspect of Star Wars, how that connects with religion, and uh, we thought this would be a really good time for our first um, guest, just because you know I went to high school with Nate, and um, he's now a pastor. He's a pastor at Emmanuel Baptist Church, so it's it's pretty cool. So we figured you know this would be the the best time to get somebody on. So we're actually gonna have him hop on right now, and we'll get the get the ball rolling. What's up, Nate? Hey, hey, Nick. Hey, Alec. Thank you all so much for having me on. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, of course. Uh, lo loving the show so far. Loved your episode on Yoda last week. Uh, fun fact about Yoda. Uh, uh, his name was going to be either Buffy or Minch. Uh, I saw before that. They, before they cited on Yoda. And I think good, good call on that one. Definitely. Definitely uh, the best option there. Master <laughs> yeah. Minch. And he feels that kind of fantasy role of like an unlikely hero, unlikely wise sage. You know, he kind of looks like a frog. Um, <laughs> kind of like how Gollum helps in the Lord of the Rings. He's oh, yeah. an unexpected, not a hero for Gollum, but helper. Yeah. I actually watched Lord of the Rings for the first time like three weeks ago. Uh, now, I, I'd say about a month and a half ago now. Um, you know, with quarantine and everything going on, me and my roommates, we decided to watch The Hobbit because they're big fans. And then we went right into the Lord of the Rings. I loved them. I thought it was. I thought it was really cool. I actually yeah. watched it for the first time this past uh, this, this past winter, man, and they're extremely well done. Yeah, big, big fan of the Hobbit series, man. That stuff, that stuff was pretty hype. I'm a big Legolas guy. He's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, well, if you're if you're interested in um, Lord of the Rings stuff like that, there's a podcast called That's What I'm Talking About, <laughs> and it's a uh, MC Watt is reading through the Lord of the Rings books for the first time. She had no background in it, and she's reading through it chapter by chapter. So each each episode each week is uh, her reviewing that chapter, and it's it's pretty interesting uh, hearing a first time perspective on it. That's really especially cool, especially for the books because they can be pretty dense sometimes. Yeah, no, I haven't read them, but that's I've definitely heard that. Um, but yeah, you guys want to want to hop in? Uh, like I said. Uh, Nate's a pastor at a church right now. He's a pastor of music and children. So again, we just figured this would be the best episode to have a have a pastor on. So Nate, if you want to start us off, like how uh, we'll ask you a couple questions first, then we'll jump in. Like how did you? How were you introduced to Star Wars and and stuff like that? Uh, Star Wars has just kind of always been a part of my life. My dad was a senior in high school, or he had just graduated high school when uh, New Hope came out, and uh, so. Then Phantom Menace came out in '99. I was four years old. Uh, grew up watching them. Had all the had lots of toys growing up. Or watched all the shows: the Tchaikovsky uh, Clone Wars, the Dave Filoni Clone Wars. I've watched Rebels. I've watched Resistance, Mandalorian. I'm rewatching yeah. Mandalorian right now. Same. Um, love the I've read some of the comic books so i was big into the comic books just because i don't have as much time to read them mm -hmm. um audiobooks i love audiobooks my audible's 90 percent star wars novels uh today i just finished uh battlefront twilight company really um, i have that i just haven't i haven't gotten around to it yet yeah it was it was a little diff a little more difficult for me to get into that one i think i've just got a lot going on so i wasn't able to focus as much on it um but just finished that one today uh, so I've got a son. Uh, he just yeah. turned one. He just turned a year old last week. Uh, his name is Jedediah, which we all know is just my way of getting my son's name to be Jedi. There you go. Longer now. Uh, that's awesome. So, <laughs> so that that's how I was able to sneak in that Star Wars angle into his name. That's great. I was actually uh, going to bring up your son too because I, you know, I see your posts on Instagram, Facebook. He's always he's got a lightsaber and stuff. You guys are always watching the shows, the movie like that. I think that's really cool. Definitely. Yeah, Lo love doing that. Um, but so, Pro Revenge of the Sith is probably one of my favorite movies. That's awesome. Uh, that or Empire. Um, and then 
favorite character, probably like Slacious B. Crumb, who was like the monkey lizard in Jabba's hut. Jabba there we Hutt's go. Palace. I'm just kidding. I, I was um, like, all right, when's the kidding coming? <laughs> well, I've got to get those like deep cut things going in there. Definitely. Um, if someone were to ask me favorite character, I'd say Vader. Vader's on my uh, phone okay. case. That's, that's my name in Arabish. Um, is it really? It is, yeah. Uh, Nathan- oh, oh, at the bottom. That's yeah, cool. And, and I've got Vader case. I've got my uh, Tie Assault shuttle. There we I've got go. Kylo Ren's lightsaber. You'll which- actually like this. Because, you know, me and Alec are big Funko Pop collectors. I'm not sure if you if you know what they are, but this is one of my favorite pops. It's, oh, it's, that's neat. It's so cool. I got to <laughs> figure out how to get that back up. I, I, like, I like the cross guard, but. When you can cut your hand off too easily, yeah. Work as well. I was reading something one time that they said, um, like they co- they kind of compared it to samurai warriors um, in actual swords, and they said if someone actually had a sword like that in battle, they would either cut their hand off or just kill themselves so quickly just because of the design of it. So I always thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, but so so Vader's probably my favorite character, nice. uh, but then probably next would be Darth Bane. All right. Um, so he he's he is canon, uh, but his story that I love uh, from his book, Path of Destruction, and then the it was a trilogy, the Darth Bane trilogy, uh, he is just one of my favorite characters. Um, I really like the dark side characters. Yeah. <laughs> I know I should like the light side characters, but I feel like the dark side characters are the just evil bad guys. They're just so much more interesting. They have such uh, a crazy I mean, story, like, you know, it goes from anything from, I'll use Vader, for example, from love to hate, anger, you know, the path of the dark side, and then to finally redemption. So it's it's the storyline of those heroes, especially of the uh, villains, especially the ones that eventually come back. It's a really cool story from start to finish. Well, they're just more relatable because you've, you've got the Jedi and kind of sneaking ahead a little bit that were kind of based off Buddhist monks, where it's no detach, no attachments, detached from the world, no emotion. That's not relatable. Humans have emotion. Humans have passion. Uh, humans love. And that's what Anakin's story is so compelling to the viewer and why we relate so much is because he was willing to do anything to save Padme, who he loved. And the Jedi forbid it even that love. And so for Anakin, it's just like, yeah, I mean, I would, I would do anything for and then I've got a character like uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn from the Rebel series. Yeah. Um, his book, I think there's a fourth one coming out in August. A fourth? Um, I thought there were only two. Uh, Thrawn, Thrawn Alliance, and Thrawn Treason. And then I think there's a, the fourth one coming out. Okay. Um, so Grand Admiral Thrawn, and then uh, from the first Thrawn book, Eli Vanto, who was Thrawn's translator. Okay. Great character. Uh, really loved him, and he, spoiler alert, went on to leave the Empire and join the Chiss Ascendancy um, huh. because Thrawn went to the Empire and he would, like, find really good people to send back to his race <laughs> yeah. to, like, help them. Um, and then Qui-Gon Jinn, uh, probably one of my favorite Jedi. Yeah. Uh, he was more of a gray Jedi. Mm-hmm. Uh, he refused in, in the book um, Master and Apprentice. We, we learned that I'm he was reading offered, that one next. I'm excited. That that's a good one. We we learned that he was offered a place on the council and he turned it a, he turned it down. Yeah. Um, because he couldn't agree with the council enough, and he was too into the prophecies, which the Jedi like Mace Windu uh, thought was dangerous to be in. You know, it's interesting um, that you bring Qui Gon Jinn up because I, in my research of you know this topic on Star Wars and religion. Qui-Gon came up a lot because, you know, when you compare, um, you know, let's say the Jedi Council or, you know, just the ways of the Jedi to religion, Qui-Gon Jinn is so different because he doesn't believe in one thing like the Jedi Council or in our terms like, you know, Buddhism, Christianity, uh, all all different, Catholicism, all these different religions. Um, He doesn't follow one thing. He follows the force. So that's kind of like that idea of just following spirituality, not going down one direct path but going where that God or God-like um, 
being takes you with, you know, in Star Wars, it being the Force. So it, it it's really interesting that you bring up Qui-Gon because he's a... I would say that because that, that's, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, that's one of, if not the first time you really see that type of character. And that obviously that's why the, that's the, the first one you really learn is able to communicate after death because mm -hmm. he becomes one with the Force after his death. He just wasn't finished with his training. Definitely. Yeah, he, he was the first one to learn that skill, and then he taught it to Yoda, and who can who told Obi Wan to learn it. Yeah, and then apparently a bunch of people learned it for Rise of Skywalker. I was reading uh, something about that today. <laughs> Actually, it's funny because I read a theory today that like you know, did Palpatine die? We see in one of the first scenes of Rise of Skywalker um, when you just hear Palpatine's voice. He did Snoke's voice and uh, Darth Vader's voice perfectly. Now I don't I don't believe this because I, well, hopefully I think Palpatine's dead. But they made a good point. Like all those Jedi at the end, you don't think they had that training to communicate after death. So could that have possibly been Palpatine, you know, kind of in her head? Um, again, I don't believe it, but it's it's definitely interesting. an interesting story. Yeah, I was. They, they did the clone thing for Palpatine, and I was like, eh, I wish they did Essence Transfer instead. But, yeah. You know. Oh, uh, yeah, and we get that from, like, the Bane books, because uh, that's something he was trying to learn, okay. is that Essence Transfer. Uh, well, so should we, should we get into, into Yeah, this? definitely. I know you wanted to talk about the uh, the original trilogy first? Or did yeah. You wanna, okay. Yeah, go ahead, yeah, man. Yeah, so, um, so now I realize... Anyone watching or listening realize that this is a very complex, uh, very broad uh, topic that we're not going to be able to cover the three of us in 20 minutes um, because you can take full semester classes yeah. um, on this topic. Uh, so I listened to a really good uh, lecture by Dr. Uh, Russell, uh, Russell, I want to make sure. Russell Johnson. I want to say Jones Johnson. Russell Johnson, uh, and I sent Nick this link, so hopefully we can get it in the show notes. Definitely. But uh, Russ, Dr. Russell Johnson did a lecture on this topic uh, for Oriental Institute, and he brought up how each of the original trilogy is sort of based on around um, a different religion and religious aspects, and so. He said, New Hope is kind of based around Christianity. Um, you've got Obi-Wan, who's um, the martyr. He's mentoring and discipling young Luke. Uh, you know, the, there's no such thing as luck. It's, it's fate. It's destiny. There's a greater power that moves in us. Um, they have to have faith in that greater power in the Force. When Luke is training on the Millennium Falcon with uh, his lightsaber and Obi-Wan tells him to put his visor down and just feel and have faith in this force. And then later when he's attacking the Death Star, put the visor down, trust in the force, have faith. And so a lot of Christian elements, like I said, with Obi-Wan being a martyr, um, he watches as Luke, as he knows Luke is going to make it safe. Uh, he sacrifices himself willingly yeah uh, he didn't he didn't fight till the end he fought until he knew luke, luke would be safe and we get this kind of concept of the force kind of like being like a a god mm -hmm. um george lucas in a in a 1999 um, article with time magazine he said i put the force into the movie in order to try to awaken a certain kind of spirituality in young people more a belief in God than a belief in any particular religious system. I wanted to make it so that young people would begin to ask questions about the mystery. I think I actually read that article. Did you? Yeah, I, because I, I it's, it wasn't familiar until that like last line. Um, but yeah, it sounds really familiar. I saw him speak about the same sort of thing in an, in an interview, and I thought that like he stated that extremely well. I think he put it in a way that wasn't going to necessarily offend people, mm -hmm. um, but like at the same time, you know, he got his point across. Yeah, when you think about it, it's, and you know, we could go on and on and on about people disagreeing on religion, but for the most part, someone believes in something. So the fact that he didn't 
you know, choose one thing like Christianity. That is what Star Wars is about. The fact that he didn't do that and he made it um, all all encompassing of just spirituality. I think that's what makes people cling on to it and really have really, like you said, it makes the young people question things and it kind of gives, you know, an adult a way. It kind of reassures, you know, my faith when I have some trouble too. It's like, you know, regardless of what you have going on in your life, there's always this greater being that, that is there. And, you know, his plan for you is always, is always in motion. So, um, it's definitely really interesting. And from the Christian side, obviously I'm a pastor, uh, at a Christian church. Yeah. And so that's my religious leanings, my focus. Uh, there's a book by Dr. Timothy Paul Jones. It's called, uh, finding God in a galaxy far, far away. And really? so what Dr. Jones did was he took and found the Christian elements in star Wars. And he wrote a book about, um, tying the Christian faith into Star Wars. And okay. he said, you know, he, he, he writes in his book here, he's like, I know it's, you know, Star Wars isn't about Christianity, but here's the elements and here's where you can find kind of understanding about Christianity in these movies. Um, so awesome. I would recommend that for anyone. You can find them on online. I, I don't think you can find it on Amazon, but you can find a couple other different places. Okay. Yeah, that's that's uh, really interesting. I have a I have a book that so you have so many books that I'm just trying to work through. I have a book about um, Star Wars and theology. So, it, it, and, um, you know, it, I think it kind of goes along those same lines, just the bigger um, universal questions about how Star Wars compares to life. So uh, I nice. definitely got to gotta get through that one. Yeah, I would love to get the textbook for the from the class at the Oriental yeah. Institute. I think that'd be interesting. Uh, well, so... We'll, we'll move on to Empire Strikes Back. Mm -hmm. uh, so this one is more focused on uh, Buddhism. This is where we meet Yoda. This is where we kind of learn what the Jedi are about because we, we kind of get a little bit of an understanding from New Hope. But in Empire, we meet Yoda who's telling Luke, you have to detach. You have to not have attachments. You've got to focus and you've got to do this, 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 this. Um, when we meet Yoda, he, he's kind of testing Luke by – playing the crazy fool just to test and see if Luke's even ready to be, be trainable, you know, because the Jedi would take the, their younglings from usually birth to about age four or five is when they would come to the Jedi temple. Um, the, the really young ones were at birth, like, um, Oh goodness. I can't think of his name. Um, Obi-Wan was another one. Yeah. Um, but then, that's why, like, Anakin at nine years old was too old to be trained as a Jedi. And then you got Luke coming in at nine, uh, 20. Yeah. Um, way too old to be trained as a Jedi because he's got too much baggage. Exactly. Uh, he already has those attachments, and you can't just it, – it's really hard to disattach. Hold on just a sec, guys. Sorry. I had something pop up on my screen from Zoom. Like five-second break. What's up? You like a five-second break to, just to edit. I oh, know. I mean, it's all good. Okay. Go ahead, but uh, yeah, you were talking about Yoda. And, no, we were talking about uh, Luke and his. Uh, you know, he was just way too old to be joining. Yeah, so so that's where we kind of get these Buddhist elements about everything is suffering. The Jedi teach that uh, meditating and detachment is the only way to peace, and um, I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, so so that's kind of where, where you get in the Empire Strikes Back, and you've got to. You know, Yoda telling Luke, if you stop your training now, if you go after these attachments of going to save your friends and going to fight Vader, uh, then you're not going to be able to complete your training, yeah. which ultimately he doesn't because when he gets back, Yoda dies. Yeah. Um, I think but, it's well, – no, sorry. Go ahead. I didn't mean to – No, 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 no. I was moving on. Go ahead. I th really quick while we're talking about Yoda, um, you know, a quote comes to mind when I – th I think it's when Luke's trying to – raise the the x-wing or when you know yoda's just talking about the force and he mentions luminous beings are we not this crude matter so it's really interesting to think of you know when you think of christianity none of this stuff we have with us none of our our physical form none of this is going on to the afterlife it's just what's in us and that's kind of like the physical world and then the the um i can't 
dang, I can't remember what it's called right now, but let's just say the, the spiritual wor world and Star Wars um, with the Force, like how... The Living Force. The Living Force, exactly. Um, you know, you transfer into the Living Force, and that's, I think, kind of what he was talking about and how that connects with religion, especially Christianity. Um, you know, that we're not this crude matter that we that we see. We're not all this stuff around us. We're what's inside, and, you know, our beliefs along the along the lines of religion and i guess the things we believe after death that determines how like where we're going to be in the living force yeah I and about both those characters they talk about how obi-wan and christianity he talks about faith you know trust in the force uh destiny those sort of things and then let I me mean, look at our introduction quote uh the you force know, will be with you defines us um when he's talking when he's with luke on uh on, in the dagobah on dagobah he's talking about how the force is between the ground and the X-wing and it's flowing around you and those sort of things. A hundred percent you get that, that Buddhist monk sort of vibe. It's our intro and outro because you know, the intro, like you just said is Yoda and then Obi-Wan think of it at right. the end. He said, remember the force will be with you always. Um, may the force be with you. I know the old saying, may God be with you. Um, so, you know, all these things, they really do connect. And what you're talking about with like the physical world and um, in in the Buddhist religion, that's where they they believe like the physical world is suffering. It, it's it's all about suffering, and that's kind of what the detach why they detach is because this world, the possessions, it's, it all causes suffering. Yeah. And to live is to suffer. And as they reach Nirvana. Um, is when you reach that enlightenment, when you just, when you understand what it means to be detached and not suffer. Uh, now then, as we move to Return of the Jedi, uh, we move more into Taoism. And so this is where uh, a lot of, so after we finish the original trilogy, we'll kind of go Star Wars in a broad sense. Cool. And Taoism is kind of where we're going to spend a lot of, a lot of time. Uh, Taoism Dao talks a lot about uh, duality, um, yin and yang, opposites and comparisons, and it's all about balance and unity and great unity. And when you look at the the Sith Code and the Jedi Code, you see how they're opposites. Um, and then you have the Great Jedi, which kind of represent that balance. Yeah. Uh, so the Sith code is peace is the lie. There's only passion. Through passion, I gain strength. Through strength, I gain power. Through power, I gain victory. Through victory, my chains are broken. The force shall set me free. And then on the you other side, got goosebumps. Spectrum, Dang. Jeez, it's deep. <laughs> God, <me> too. Like, <laughs> and those are the bad guys. I know it's uh, crazy. <laughs> it's weird when you look at the bad guys in in Star Wars. You're like. Well, shoot, like, I know I shouldn't think that that's awesome and that their ideologies aren't, like, that they're not completely bad. I kind of understand where they're coming from. And I'm like, man, like, I understand why you went down this this path. Like, you were trying to do it for a good reason. But uh, so, what's up? Mm -hmm. And motives, and that's what makes it like you're kind of in a way you're kind of rooting for them, hoping that they come towards the light side, obviously. But like, yeah, you're Kylo. All, all, not necessarily, not necessarily, but yeah. like those type of guys, you're like, ah, you can't help but you know feel for them. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. definitely. Nate, you want to get back? Look at the yeah. Jedi code um, is basically the opposite. There's no emotion. There's peace. There's no ignorance. There's knowledge. There's no passion. There's serenity. There's no chaos. There's harmony. There's no death. There's the Force. And that one is just a lot harder to resonate with as a human being uh because we look at that and we go i mean emotions aren't bad no uh you know passion isn't bad we, we kind of want to agree with the ignorance and the chaos um but the, the other things like well I mean, it's not that bad uh but then you look at the great jedi and it says there is no dark side there is no light side there is only the force. I will do what I must to keep the balance. There is no good without evil, but evil must not be allowed to flourish. There is passion, yet peace. There is serenity, yet emotion. 
and there is chaos, yet order. So the Great Jedi is kind of the embodiment of this Taoism and this duality, the perfect unity of the light and dark. There is this and this. There's this and this. But they can't be out of balance. The evil can't overpower the good. And so when we start looking at that, now we'll kind of look at things more broadly. And one of my favorite characters, Bane, now this is Legends, although I got into a internet argument a week ago because someone told me everything I said was wrong about Bane. I'm like, it's it's not. It's just from a different book than you're reading. Um, <laughs> but Bane set up the rule of two. Yep. And, and I think that's still canon, but I don't know if the reasoning behind it is still canon. Uh, Bane's thing about the rule of two was that there should be one to embody the dark side and one to crave it. So he sought to embody and be the dark side. And then he had his apprentice, Xana, who would crave it. And eventually she would gain enough power to kill him and embody the force while she moved on to her next apprentice, who ended up being uh, Cognus uh, and Ektochi. Um, the Ktochi is really cool because they're force um, sensitive, even if they're not Jedi or anything. Mm-hmm. And Cognis, she gets that because she was kind of pre cognizant She could kind of see into the future. Um, like Anakin was good at pod racing because he could see into the future slightly because of the uh, force. But so that's why Bane set up the rule too. When Bane was being trained as a Sith, he went to the Sith Academy and was trained with all the other Sith, and it was the uh, Brotherhood of Darkness. And he saw that they were weak. Even though they out, they were there were 10,000 Sith, they couldn't defeat the Jedi because they were weak. Because Bane understood by the holocrons of people like Darth Revan that the dark side worked better in small numbers when it was compact, and the light side worked better in large numbers. Alex, so, really quick, that goes back to what Alec brought up. I think it was in our first, our second episode. It was your episode about uh, Palpatine. Palpatine. I was about to get there. Yes, <laughs> yeah. All right, go ahead, go ahead, since you're going to touch on it. Yeah, so um, so Bane saw that the, that the D- Brotherhood of Darkness was weak because there were too many of them. They were not striving to be the best. They were striving for equality like the Jedi. And Bane said, that's not how the dark side is. And so Bane convinced um, and tricked the leaders of the Brotherhood of Darkness to basically go on a suicide mission that got all of the Sith killed um, by by setting off a thought bomb that killed all the Sith and a hundred Jedi that went out with that went after them. And so Bane left, he got out of there. He found uh, Xana, who was at the time named Rain, and he trained her to become his Sith apprentice um, and carry on the rule of two. And he drilled it into her head. And he said, you know, you're going to kill me someday. I'm going to give you all the tools you need to kill me. But when you try to kill me, you better make sure you're ready because if not, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. And so that's what was supposed to carry on. And, and Bane realized we need to stay in the shadows. We need to stay in the darkness. We're not supposed to be out well known. And that's what carried on all the way to Palpatine was this understanding that the Sith legacy was in the shadows. Yeah. And you get Darth Plagueis who was in the shadows and in legends, he was immune in charge of the banking industry and trained Palpatine secretly until Palpatine killed him in his sleep during episode one, but that's legends now. Yeah. But then now we're in Canon Palpatine. He, he abided by the rule of two. He had Maul, got rid of Maul, got Dooku, got rid of Dooku, took on Anakin. Uh, but Palpatine really wanted the power of one. Yeah. And so, so if we still believe Darth Bane's uh, kind of reasoning for the power of for the power of two is that too many Sith wouldn't be powerful because the dark side works in smaller numbers. So that's why Palpatine had the rule of one. He wanted to be the powerful one. 
he wanted to carry off the Sith legacy. And I wonder if that's what ended up leading to his, you know, definite demise. I wonder, like, you know, they survived so so long being the rule of two. They go, you know, Palpatine finally gets it in a way to just him. And I wonder if that's uh, that line of thinking is what eventually got him out, got him killed. Right, because if the, if the original reason was that the master would eventually be killed by the apprentice, that would only gain strength after so many so many years and centuries and uh, apprentices later that eventually if you're if you're the master then there's no way to get physically stronger because no one is ever going to be stronger than you yeah and exactly infinite power all the time with his ideology ideological ideology 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 geez uh, behind that there's no way for him to have that unlimited power yeah and do, yeah. you know this is kind of off subject but going back to palpatine killing plagueis i've never really thought of you know, kind of how cowardly he killed him, killed him in his sleep. You hear about Bane talking to his apprentices, you know, not quoting or anything, but when you want to kill me, you better be ready because if you're not strong enough, I will kill you. So you think about it, it is pretty cowardly for Palpatine to do it in his sleep. So I, I've never really yeah. thought about that before. In, in the book, uh, Plagueis, he gets him drunk and then kills him after he's basically you know, Wasted. made him unconscious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but so, so then back to Taoism, back to duality, back yeah. to religion is Palpatine going after the power of one, going after this all consuming power, takes on Vader as his apprentice, executes order 66, wipes out the Jedi. We now have an imbalance. There was balance with the two Sith and the many Jedi, but then take off, uh, take out all the Jedi, and now the Sith, the dark side, is too powerful. And when you go back to the Great Jedi Code, there is no good without evil, but evil must not be allowed to flourish. Yep. When you wipe out the Jedi, evil is allowed to flourish. And that goes and back. So it throws out the balance. Yeah, and. I always blank on their names, but that goes back to the father, daughter, and son that were in Rebels and Clone Wars. You know, you have the father who kind of embodies, I don't want to say that not, he's not a Jedi or anything like that, but he embodies just that middle area. You have the daughter who's the light and then the son who's the darkness and they can't survive without each other. Um, so it, it like, I, I see where you were going with that, how there has to be that middle portion. There has to be that balance. Yeah, exactly. My personal favorite arc in Clone Wars. I thought that yeah. was absolutely crazy. But Just yeah, crazy. The, the Mortis arc is great. Um, I saw y'all's, y'all's post about the veil possibly coming. Yeah, um, have you seen that? No, I hadn't seen it. I saw in y'all's uh, yeah. thing. I, I don't want them to do alternate timelines. Me neither. I, that's messy so um, look, really quick before we get into it let me you know explain to al I, I talked to alec a little bit about it and i explained it in the post i took it from this article but for everybody really quick um so the veil of the force obviously was introduced in star wars rebels it was that world between worlds um which was pretty much the doorways to all of time and space so you know with the with the fans reactions to the sequel trilogy a lot of people at lucasfilm are really working to use the veil of the force to make the sequel trilogy, you know, Force Awakens, uh, Last Jedi, and Rise of Skywalker. They're trying to use that to make the sequel trilogy an alternate timeline, which would in turn make it Legends. Um, you know, th there's an article, and I'll put the link to it. It goes a lot deeper. Uh, it seems like Kathleen Kennedy would be on her way out of Lucasfilm and Star Wars. Um, I'm not a fan of it. I liked I liked the sequels. I I'm one of those Star Wars fans. What they give me, you know, I'm just gonna go in there with an open mind and enjoy it. You know, that's that's the Star Wars story. I'm not gonna argue with it. Um, so I would hate to see it just completely change just because the people didn't agree with it. I think sometimes yes. just you know, and this is a hot take. Just suck it up and you know, enjoy the movie. Because when you look at it, if, if you're a Star Wars fan, they're not bad movies. They might not be perfect, but, you know, it's Star Wars. 
you, you can't hate on it for so long, but I really There's hope. laser swords. Exactly. Just enjoy it. <laughs> exactly. It's sci-fi. All, the, all that good stuff. Yeah. But Nate, you want to want to keep going? Yeah, so so the mortar arc was going to be a big was uh, a big thing that it it embodied balance. You had the father who was balance and his daughter and son, and then if you haven't seen the Clone Wars, the daughter is killed uh, while well, she gives her life essence to save Ahsoka, and so Ahsoka kind of starts to embody the light side. Yeah, um, and then she has the the bird owl. That was kind of the symbol of the daughter that follows her around that you see in Rebels. Uh, you see it in the last episode of season seven in the Clone in the yeah. Clone Wars. It's, I'm getting goosebumps uh, again above with Vader. Uh, so, so that's so that's showing the balance. Um, but then just kind of overall, as we move away from the original trilogy and we move into Star Wars, kind of in a broad sense. Um, there are a lot of religions, even within Star Wars, um, a lot of them focusing on the Force in some way, uh, especially with so many different alien races that are Force-sensitive, but um, my, are not necessarily Force-sensitive enough to become Jedi. Yeah. Um, like the life celebration that we see in Rise of Skywalker, um, but is mentioned in other things, like it was mentioned in the episode first episode of mandalorian yeah uh, the first bounty we see mando getting he's like oh i was gonna go home on, for life day hoping to be home guess not um then he gets shoved into carbonite yeah uh but so so we see like this multitude of religions even within star wars in general but it kind of focuses and you, you'll see this a lot uh when yoda speaks it's uh i always miss say this word um panentheism okay. which is the force is in all things is all things surrounds all things uh so that's yoda right there that, that's yoda so it's kind of like a native american animistic kind of mysticism where the the trees have their own spirit the rocks have their own spirit when vader after he becomes vader and he's in a suit, he builds his palace on Mustafar because the planet is just soaked in dark side energy, dark side of the force. And so that idea that a planet can just embody the force and, and especially like one side of the force, dark side or um, Ilum, which is where yep. in the Clone Wars, the Padawans go to get their Kyber crystals for the lightsabers. That's more of a light side induced it, uh, infused planet um, so that's where you get like the animistic panentheism um, the forces on all things uh, with Star Wars we see some more of the Christian aspects with Anakin's immaculate conception yeah. uh, conceived by the force I think Alec you might have mentioned uh, that comic that showed um, uh, Palpatine the Emperor creating Anakin yeah, yeah. Um, so hate to break it to you. So I did some more research cause I, I think that's legends and I've seen it. It's not legends. It's, it's canon, but the writer of the comic said Palpatine did not create Anakin, that that's just the way the dark side of the force corrupts your mind. It shows you what it wants to show you. So Anakin Vader seeing that Palpatine created him is just a way for Palpatine to gain huh. control over Vader. Wow. Um, and there, there's a really popular fan theory, which I kind of, um, I, I definitely see the merits to is that, uh, we, we know that people in star Wars use the force and alchemy, like like witchcraft. Um, in Legends, Darth Xana was very powerful with Sith alchemy. And we see the Dark Sisters, like Asaz Ventress and yep. Mother Talzin, they use this, like, uh, the magics. Yep. And when, now, th now this is canon, when Palpatine was putting Vader in his suit, he was using Sith alchemy to help bond the suit to him. I read that. And 
And so the theory is that while Palpatine was using Sith alchemy, he was drawing Padme's life force from Padme, killing Padme to uh, imbue Vader with her life essence. You said that was it, because I, I've heard of that as well. You said that was a um, an article or? It, it's a theory I've seen around. I've seen okay. articles. I've seen videos of it. Um but but so that it's it's the idea that maybe Padme didn't die of sadness. Yeah. She it makes she more sense. She died because the Emperor took her life essence away from her in with his Sith alchemy. And so another way that the Force can be kind of uh, manipulated. Yeah. That's, that's way cooler. <laughs> Oh. Better than just her being sad. There's so many memes, and uh, oh my gosh, there's so much content out there about Palpatine, about uh, uh, Padme dying of sadness. It's ridiculous. So that that actually gives a really cool spin on it. That's really neat. And and that's why I that that's kind of my head canon because it would make sense um, as to why someone perfectly healthy died. Sorry, give me one uh, sec, guys. All right, sorry about that. No, you're good. Uh, and it would show just more of the power of the dark side and more of the just evil, uh, where you've got this good and evil. But even from something so evil, we have Luke and Ray. We have that good come out of it. We have Padme, a good person, a good mother, and Vader, the father, come to create this balance, to create... Luke and Leia, the chosen ones, and it's you know I don't think we ever actually find out who the chosen one is. Yeah, because it's uh, it can be argued between a couple different people, you know. It, it, it's who who brought balance. So so when we're focusing on this balance, and I don't know, maybe this is getting off topic. So if you ever want me to stop, stop. No, you're good, but, man. I'm not on a time the, limit. <laughs> the the chosen one trope is something that Star Wars is obviously very known to use. It's throughout uh, a new hoping Luke being the chosen one to bring balance to the force but then you go to the prequels and anakin's the the chosen one to bring balance to the force and these are from prophecies that qui-gon studied that dooku studied before qui-gon that were from the old jedi thousands of years ago uh so you've got anakin did he bring balance he brought the jedi numbers down and he became a Sith, so now we've got, you know, two Sith and a small number of Jedi, but was that balanced? If Darth Bane, which like I said is Legends, Darth Bane's idea is that the dark side needs to be in few and the Jedi need to be in many. The light side needs to be in many. So did Anakin bring balance? Not really, because then you have the Galactic Empire that just reigned evil and terror and so then you have Luke come. Now, is he the chosen one? Is he the one to bring balance? He helps uh, bring down the Emperor. He train, um, He gets Vader to leave the dark side and come back to the light. But go back to the Great Jedi Code, and it said, there is no good without evil. Now, you've got Luke, but both Sith are dead, Yeah. We thought. Who, where, where's the balance? Now we've got an imbalance with too much good and no evil. So now you have Rey. Is Rey the new chosen one? Because she's from a Palpatine, but she chooses the light side. She has the force abilities of the dark side, like lightning, but has the light side abilities of healing. She has the yellow lightsaber. Yep. Um, at the end, which was used by the Jedi Sentinels. Um, the yellow lightsaber symbolized their ability to uh, be a little more rogue yeah. because they need to be a little bit more violent than Jedi's normally were because they were guardians. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, was Rey the balance because she brought Kylo from the dark to the light and she is from the dark side lineage, but has the light side so we don't know who the real chosen one is yeah we probably never will until 
Kathleen Kennedy or someone decides to just make outlandish claims and they put it in Fortnite. And <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, you're not wrong, man. You're not wrong, uh, man. This is a heavy subject. You're definitely, I'm, I'm definitely learning a lot. You know, like it's, it's pretty crazy to see, you know, some because obviously you said it yourself, like you know, your religion is the pretty much the main factor in your life for the most part. And it's interesting to see, to hear your, your takes on it. And because, you know, I, I look at the spiritual side of Star Wars, but it's awesome to hear, you know, how much deeper you, you've researched it and looked into it. So, you know, I appreciate you teaching me all that. That's, that's really cool. Oh, it's absolutely. Really cool. And you know, there's something I love. I love being able to see like the Christian elements in it, but I yeah. realize like there's more than that. I, I realize that there's these kind of Eastern religious and, uh, influences and because star wars is just a space western slash samurai movie yeah and uh you get all this but um i love that the, the spiritual elements in it because obviously yes yeah, religion is a big part of my life i'm a pastor uh, i'm in seminary right now working on my master's it's in awesome. christian ministry um i read a lot of theology books and i you know, st study all this stuff. So getting to put it towards something that's kind of fun and a little bit less heavy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because if we disagree over the religion in Star Wars, what does it matter? Yeah. Who, who cares? Yeah. Uh, it, except for the guys that um, put on their uh, census that they're practicing Jediism. Jediism. Yeah. <laughs> which is a growing. Uh, Growing religion in the world. Yeah, it started, I mean, it's, started in the UK in 2005. Yeah, but, uh, me and Alec were talking about that earlier. That's pretty crazy. They took it a little too far. Yeah, it took it a little too far. I wanted to wanted to do a in one of my uh, world religion classes. Wanted to do a project on that, but the professor was like, "Eh, pick a different." Maybe religion. not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's like, funny. This one's so much fun. They have lightsabers. I know. They gosh, they use the force. I'm, just, I'm yeah. still waiting for them to make a lightsaber. There's no way they can't. Come on, with the technology we have, there's no way they can't make a lightsaber or an Iron Man suit. There's got to be one. Yeah, we got to get Elon Musk onto that. Oh, I'm, if there's anybody that's already made one, I bet he has. He made a spaceship. <laughs> I'm sure he can make a lightsaber. He's got the flamethrowers. Exactly. Um, yeah, the uh, Disney or... It wasn't Disney. It was um, some some page on Instagram has started selling the dark saber. Really, uh, I've I've seen that because you have ha uh, not Hasbro anymore, but you have the Force FX lightsabers that you know I have a lot of them. Um, the Black series, and then you have all these other companies that make lightsabers. They <clears> make them look pretty much exactly like the real ones, um, but they're obviously not officially licensed through star wars now i actually bought one from one of the websites and i i won't say i actually can't even remember what their name is but i did not like the quality going from a force fx to the other one who was you know highly regarded i was actually very surprised the how little quality it had but i have seen the dark saber floating around and that is one that i've debated on debated on getting Yes, one of my so with quarantine and everything, all the craziness going on right now, um, we have Disney passes. We're not too far away from Disney World. Mm -hmm. We're like thirty, forty-five minutes away where we live, and so we have where do you Disney live? passes. I'm in Lakeland. Okay, gotcha. Um, so so we're just west of the mouse. Yeah, and I love if you ever get a chance, go to Hollywood Studios. Go to Galaxy's Edge. Uh, Black Spire Outpost, it is fantastic. Man. But one thing I just hadn't pulled the trigger on was building my own lightsaber. And we hit quarantine. We were saving a bunch of money because we weren't going anywhere. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to pull the trigger. I'm going to build my own lightsaber. And now we're canceling our passes just because we're we're not going to be able to go anytime soon, even yeah. when they open. Uh, but so... My first uh, f first business as soon as we get back to Disney is to go build my own lightsaber. Man, it's <laughs> it's crazy you bring that up because Alec, you know, Alec lives in Arizona. I live in Pittsburgh, but as you know, like we're all three of us were from Florida, 
Um, we're me and Alec. We live in Bradenton still. Well, actually, no, Alec, you don't. My parents and everybody lives in Bradenton. So next, actually, two weeks from yesterday, um, Alex coming here. To he's flying to Pittsburgh now. What we're doing, we're still going down to Florida, but it it it, it always happens like this. It worked out too perfectly. We were driving down, uh, leaving July 9th. We were going to go to Tampa Bay Comic Con on July 10th. And then we were going to go to Galaxy's Edge on the 11th because that was, I saw Disney opening up on the 11th. I was like, oh crap, like we got to go. And then I saw that it was opening up the 15th, uh, Hollywood Studios with limited capacity. Not everything would be open. Um, first comic, well, Comic-Con just got canceled two days ago, which that was a real kick in the butt. But we ultimately, a couple weeks ago, we ended up deciding that when we go to Galaxy's Edge, we want we don't want there to be any. We want to make sure that we go when ev- you can do everything because I don't want to get there and realize half the stuff's closed. And the main thing I want to do is uh, make my own lightsaber. Like I'm gonna drop some coin and build that lightsaber. I've watched on YouTube the process and the whole. I won't spoil it. For yeah, don't spoil. I want to be completely. Dude, it looks uh. unreal. Oh, I, I've got a friend who who did get one, and the quality is it, it's worth it. I oh, mean, I'm sure. And I've I've looked at some of these websites on where you can buy a lightsaber on the website. I'm like, well, the ones at Disney are even cheaper than that. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like it, like it's it's a little bit of coin, but it's it's worth it. I yeah. Just, I wish I'd pulled the trigger sooner because now it'll be six plus months before I can pull that trigger. But, I feel that. I feel uh, that. I actually have... Sorry, go ahead, Alec. What's your saber color of choice? Ooh. Well, okay. I really love the red ones, but yeah. then my wife is always like, isn't that the bad guy's color? Uh-oh. <laughs> yes. And, but I also really like green. Um, growing up, I loved Qui-Gon Jinn. I loved Kit Fistu. I loved anyone who had a green light Yoda, anyone that had a green lightsaber. Yeah. Um, so, and then I started like in red more. And then when I just got older and started learning more and reading more and stuff like that, I was like, Oh, the dark side character is really cool. Um, so I started liking the red more and I like the design. I love the curved, um, the curved handles. Mm-hmm. And those are mainly dark side characters because what the curved handle does is it ch- changes the uh, trajectory of the blade. Yep. And so when you're sparring, it is slightly off. And that's why a lot of the dark side people use it. Darth Bane, Asajj, Count Dooku. Um, there's a couple others that all had that. It's actually going to be a topic we talk about sometime soon is different types of uh, swords, swordsman styles. Mm. Uh, the set, the seven different. Uh, I'm really interested. Styles. I'm a big fan of Dooku with the curved hilt, um, and how he wasn't necessarily super strong at the force, but he was a master swordsman. Uh, mm-hmm. sort of that sort of, sort of thing we're going to talk about here in, 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 in the next couple episodes. I actually saw yeah. yesterday that um, you know going back, going not not in you know Star Wars canon legends, but the reason you know Dooku. You know, in the real real world, the real reason they made Dooku's lightsaber—I wish I could remember his name—but he is a descendant of Christopher Lloyd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Christopher Lee. Uh, he's the descendant of like a king or something, and that king was the first king to have like a curved handle on his sword. So they made his lightsaber with a curved handle, and then obviously they were able to, you know, make that story like amplify that story with. Um, the traje- trajectory of the blades and, and all that. Yeah, exactly. So it was. I thought that was really cool how you know his lineage came into his light za- lightsaber design. Yeah, that is really cool. Alec, what's your uh, lightsaber color? It's a little. Uh, I'm a big fan of the purple. Yeah. Um, I know it's not. It doesn't. That's not necessarily. It doesn't mean anything. It's kind of just. Yeah, hey, Sam Jackson, you're awesome. You can do whatever you want. Uh, but like the first time I saw it and I was like, yeah, I was like, that thing is sick. Uh, and just, you know, the uniqueness of it. Um, but if I actually had to, you know, pick a, you know, more canon color, definitely probably blue, uh, just because I, you know, for me, you know, obviously Annie can be my favorite character, 
to me, the blue represents physical strength a little bit more than the, than the green. Um, and I think that's what I'm more of a fan of in Star Wars in a, in a way. Um, obviously, being, a, being an athlete and working in sports the whole life, your, your, your goal is to dominate other teams at, at a high level, at, the, at a very high That's very level. Sithish of you. Meh. Well, it's actually very, very funny you say that because I. You what? It's funny. It's funny you say that because um, I like the green, and the green was actually designated for the Jedi that were more um, force focused. Yeah. Right? And so, like the the more scholarly Jedi had green, and then your warrior class had the blue, mm-hmm. like Obi Wan and Anakin. That's why Qui Gon had a green because he was very into the. Yeah, he's very into the prophecies and everything like that. Uh, Kyber just, crystal and, picks you, right? <laughs> do what? No, Kyber crystal picks you. You don't pick it. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And the purple's really cool. Um, Mara Jade, who was Luke's wife in Legends, yeah. had a purple lightsaber. Darth Revan had a red and a purple. Purple's a great color. It is. Different. That's why I like. always liked it. Personally, for yeah. me... Um, Nate, really quick, did you play the game um, Fall, uh, Jedi Fallen Order by chance? No, I'm I'm not a big video game okay. guy. Um, don't have uh, my video game system is my computer, which is too slow. I tried to get Battlefront two, really, and it just I don't even have enough RAM on my computer to play it, and yeah. so I just sort of like, man, I wasted all that money on buying that game, and I can't even play it. Yeah, <sighs> I started ripping Battlefront two again like last week, and I've been killing it. Uh, but Why what I would the, uh, the story from Fallen Orders because it is canon. It's really I, I personally loved it. It was really cool. Um, yeah. So there's a part closer to the end of the story where you fu- your Kyber crystal calls to you, and then you know you don't pick uh, up until this point. You could pick like blue, green, purple, and uh, like yellow. But then once you find the crystal, it becomes this much more and not intense, but a much more broad spectrum. And I really liked like right in the middle between blue and purple, um, blue, Alec, pretty much for everything you said. And then, uh, you know, my grandma, she actually passed away in 2017 and man, she was like the embodiment of purple. And, you know, since she passed me and my family, it's weird with the color purple, it's become so much more personal. Um, so I, I really like that, little color between blue and purple where you know you're you're that warrior but for me also it's kind of like that uh i I don't know how to describe it just like you know have have your grandmother with you sorry uh alec you were cutting out there what'd you say it it means something to you and exactly in in the star wars universe you know i think that would definitely have a dictation on the kyber crystal that would call out to you definitely so it's pretty cool pretty cool um, is you know, I think we're kind of wrapping up. Is there anything, anything else anybody has? I was just gonna say thank y'all so much yeah, for having man. me on. Um, if if your listeners out there uh, enjoy Star Wars podcast, um, obviously there are tons of them. Yeah. Thank you for listening to this one. Um, but hello from elsewhere, uh, Casey and Valerie Winters talk a lot about deep dive stuff. Like they did a uh, whole episode and their episodes are hour or so long on like the names <clears throat> in star Wars and what the names mean. Uh, so is really Minch cool in there? Stuff. Uh, no, Minch is not in there, but they do a deep dive on like Kylo Ren, which means water lily. And, uh, they, they do a ton of, they talk about salacious B crumb, uh, wow. <laughs> on their podcast. So they're, they're a great one to listen to. And uh, Ryan over at Sword of Star Wars podcast. That's just a fun one. He's a he's a fun dad that likes Star Wars. That's cool. Uh, it's really thing- quick. It's interesting that you say Water Lily because when that came up, I was like, "Where have I heard that?" And that was um, uh, Ego's name for his wife in Guardians of the Galaxy too. He called her. Oh wait, no, that was Rip, my River Lily. So never mind. I was trying to think of like a comparison between those two, but it's River Lily instead of Water Lily. My bad. Um, also while you're talking about other Star Wars podcasts, I know, um, there's a couple, there's a couple good ones that we're following with on Instagram. Um, you know, Twin Suns Outpost has some good information. 
Um, also, for the future, we're actually going to be teaming up with Carbonite Crew. Um, you know, the name goes kind of hand in hand with ours. When we made ours, we didn't realize, um, you know, there's another one out there. But we've actually talked about um, kind of joining forces and getting all of us on one and uh, kind of distributing that to both audiences. So be on the lookout for that. But Nate, like you said, there's there's a lot of awesome Star Wars podcasts out there. Uh, the main one I've listened to, and you know, he doesn't need a shout out from us, but it's Star Wars Theory. He has like, that, yeah. So you've heard of it. He, I love his <laughs> videos. Like he, I've learned so much about Star Wars from him. Um, you know, he's gotten some. He, I know he got Ashley Eckstein, um, who plays Ahsoka. He got her on. So I'd like to start mirroring some of that stuff because he does some really cool stuff. That Vader show he's producing. Yeah, have you watched that, Nate? Um, I've heard about it. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. It's only 15 minutes. It's awesome. How have I not watched it yet, then? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Oh, man. They're trying to get the funding to make a second one, but it's it's really cool. I'll have to make sure I watch that before I go to bed tonight. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, but yeah, Nate, I wanted to say as well, you know, thanks for being our first guest. Um, obviously, you stated earlier, like, there's no possible way this one session to get through even one percent of everything that's out there yeah. so i know myself I, I learned a ton i know nick learned a ton um and i know we'd definitely be interested in, in having you on again because like, i mean yeah for sure yeah i would i would love to be on again sometime obviously i know a lot about star wars because we kind of got off on, on a couple tangents there that's how it goes though sorry if i ever overstep no but, uh, <laughs> it's not it's not a uh, not scripted it's a conversation exactly yeah no i that's what that's really what i like about the show is you know, we start with one topic. I know last week we started with Yoda, and we veered off. In, obviously, there's the connection with Yoda and the child. We veered off into the Mandalorian and just got to talking about that. So that's what Star Wars does. You know, it's a it's this whole other universe that we're able to connect with, and it's you know, it's endless possibilities and endless stories that we can talk about. But like Alex said, we really appreciate you uh, coming on and. I for what you know, like you said, I'd love to have you back on. Like you said, I I learned a lot, and it was it was a lot of fun. Awesome. I look forward to it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, uh, thank you guys for listening. Um, you know, it's the same like every other show. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all the main ones. Uh, just Carbonite Car- Carbonite Convos. Um, we post daily, daily content, so be on the lookout for all that. And we will, you know, see you guys next week. Awesome. May the force be with you. Yes, sir. See you guys. Remember... The Force will be with you, always.